Benny, let's recap. You know, this wire card scandal, I feel like it's been on everyone's radar for years, but Baffin in particular and the Munich prosecutor um, felt like everything was cool. Yes, that's right. And that is really, there are really two scandals going on here. One is the wire card accounting scandal that you mentioned, but the other is really the scandal of not uncovering the scandal. And that's where regulators and investigators uh, are taking a hard look at themselves. And that's really sort of the second probe underway now. How can it be uh, that uh, a company that was really under this cloud for many years, going back more than a decade, uh, there were the first allegations of accounting irregularities going back as as far as 2008, how can it be that they were not properly investigated? And in fact, worse still, that the investigators were uh, in investigating other com uh, or other people behind this. Um, so journalists and 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 some some analysts that, that came up with these allegations. So uh, that is really the, as I said, the scandal behind the scandal when it was all out in the open for many years. Yeah, good morning to you, Benny. So two scandals uh, run into each other. What is happening next, then, in this saga that is Wirecard? So Wirecard, as Matt said, is getting kicked off the DAX today. It was a short-lived uh, career on that uh, illustrious index, the 30 biggest companies. And uh, the company's insolvent. Uh, they are being wound down now. And uh, the insolvency administrator is sort of trying to flog what's uh, left of the, the wreckage of Wirecard. And, and there really isn't that much left. They have debt of about 3 billion euros and assets that are worth a fraction of this. Uh, so maybe <clears throat> optimistic. 150, 200 million euros. Uh, so the creditors won't see uh, very great returns in this. We're seeing some assets already being sold in the UK, in Brazil. There's also Wirecard Bank. So they had a they had a, they had a banking license, and that's not part of the insolvency proceedings. Uh, apparently, Deutsche Bank we're hearing is looking at that. So really, sort of picking apart uh, the company and seeing what's left of it. It's kind, of, it's kind of interesting, Benny, that they're replacing, you know, one, what seems like kind of a newfangled tech company with another um, even newer fangled kind of tech company. Delivery Hero is replacing Wirecard in the DAX, and they don't even make any money, right? Yes, yeah, so there are some people obviously out there saying, are we doing ourselves any favor here by sort of replacing one company that doesn't have much of a business model or a shady one with another one that has a business model? People are buying uh, the food online and getting it delivered and all that. But as you say, they've not made a profit yet. They're a fairly young, unproven company. They only listed about three years ago. And so far, uh, no, no uh, sort of return in terms of profitability. Um, there is... Obviously, first in Germany and the desire to have more uh, punchy uh, tech companies out there. The only major tech company that Germany has is uh, SAP. Uh, and there was always that desire to build up other companies around that and to have more on the DAX, uh, which is still a very sort of old school index. You know, there are likes of Volkswagen and Siemens and BSF and so on, but very few sort of the equivalents of the, the Googles and the Apples and, and the Amazons of the world, those don't really exist over here. And there's obviously that hope yeah. that with a company like Delivery Hero, we might be able to sort of spawn our own uh, in, indigenous uh, tech industry over here.